Well, hello there and welcome to the Okanagan Forest Channel. I'm now down in my original camp in the lower part of the meadow. There isn't much left of it. We'll take a look. It's kind of interesting. It's just not too far from the stream. When I first camped here, of course, this picnic table, which is now in bad state of repair, is finally completely deteriorated, um, was still standing and I could use it for things. But what I find more interesting is right here. This is the fire ring and you can tell that there hasn't been a fire there for a long time. But those are big stones. Why do you think those big stones are moved around like that? Now I have a hunch, just a hunch, maybe somebody smarter than, than I am can tell me. But I think what we have here is an example of a big old bear that came through and decided that he would look under those stones to see if there were any grubs. Because the last time I was down here, those stones weren't torn around like that. Now it could be that it might have been a cow looking for some salt, but more likely to move those around like that, I think it might have been a big old bear. And of course, they're around here. Now let's go ahead and walk up through, up through the meadow. and continue on this hike and there's just looking up towards this looking through the meadow up the hill almost directly up towards my cabin you can't see it because the trees block it but if there were no trees if we cut down all the trees you could probably see my cabin from here i really have to believe that the Okanagan Highlands in October is just about the nicest time of year of all. The bugs are, well, they're not completely gone, but mostly gone. And the ones that bother you are all gone. So it really is a nice time to be in the forest. Just a little puff of cloud there. So far, it's been kind of quiet on this hike. I haven't really seen or heard anybody. Two legs or four. We're gonna go ahead. We've done our bushwhacking in the first video. And now what we're gonna do is, we're basically gonna walk, walk the road back to camp. That means we got a steep hill to go up. So I'll apologize right now for all the huffing and puffing that I'll probably do. Then again, then again I'll, I may just, you know, stop occasionally to get a good view and catch my breath. Well, there's, there's some proof that cows have been around. That's pretty clear evidence. Well, let's walk down the road into the deep trees, turn around and have a look. You can look up the hill again there. And right up there is where my cabin is. Just above that a little bit. Now well, let's turn around and look see from where we have come that's looking at the road and again more trees we got a little wind i realize that that wind kind of you can hear it with the microphone on the camera better than than i can actually it, it makes a little noise so but here we're walking through a really deep thick part of the forest on my property and to our right just up the hill a little bit I'm told by my neighbor who is here year-round and 
walks these areas that there's a there's a spring up in here and that makes a lot of sense because even in the hottest part of summer when things are the driest it's always kind of down in this thick forested area it's it's always kind of green and nice and uh, it's just a pleasant place to to be really You know, it's kind of interesting. It's beautiful blue sky. It was beautiful like this yesterday as well. But last night after the sun went down, it rained a little bit. And so there was, you know, there really isn't any dust. You can see that it, it has rained. There's a puddle still on the road, but it has rained and it's starting to, you know, the fire hazard isn't as bad as it was, but It really, uh, really is a nice time to be here. Now we're going to come down to where the, this road is looking pretty good right now, to tell you the truth, but it um, doesn't get the attention the road up ahead does because um, there are fewer people coming through here. Now. Both sides of the road here are, are my property. This junction, if you want to call it that, is part of my property. Incidentally, there's kind of an old skid trail that goes down off that. And again, there'd be a game trail that you could follow down in there if you wanted to. But we're coming out to the junction, and that's where the gate is that goes up to, uh, up to my cabin up above. Now that's looking down the main road. Um, it's about two miles down that road to uh, to the highway. And of course in the wintertime this road is snowed in. And if it weren't for the kindness and, and hard work of my neighbors plowing it out, I would uh, have considerable problems. Now we're going to go around the gate. The gate's closed right now. But you can kind of see the junction. It was right down here at this junction. Just about 50 feet, oh 60 feet down in front of us in the camera here that I saw a Canadian Lynx uh, go across the road in front of me one morning when I was leaving early to go back to civilization. and. Uh, just up the road here a little bit, my neighbor saw a while back a big wolf. So they're around and there is lots of uh, sightings of cougar. Neighbors have taken pictures and things. Here's another one of those big old pieces of, of timber from arguably more than a hundred years ago that's just about decomposed, got moss growing on it. And now we're going to start huffing and puffing up the hill to get back up to my cabin. Now my neighbor was saying that just right down in there where it's kind of dark somewhere right in there is where that spring is. I haven't ever seen it, but he says it's there somewhere. This road, when I first came in here, was terrible. It was truly a four-wheeler road. But again, my neighbor, my good neighbor, has put a lot of energy and effort and money into making this road um, a very good road. Now his property is north of mine, and so he has an easement to 
um, come across come across my property. Both sides of the road are are mine, and it's kind of interesting, really. But one of the reasons that I liked this property was that it, it wasn't as steep as a lot of the other property in this drainage. But it also had this junction with the roads going across and then cutting off uh, one road going east to west and then this road going essentially north to south. And what that meant was I could easily access most of the property by driving on the roads that were already here. And so that made it more valuable to me. Okay, let's turn around and take another look. This is looking down just towards where the gate is. And there is the mountain across the way. And again, that's government land and they have been logging it. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but you see to the left of the patch of tall trees, you can see where the small trees have already been put in and they're growing and up above as well. One of the requirements of doing this kind of forestry is that you methodically reforest. And this is actually the first time that I've been able to look up there and see that it has been planted with small trees in lines by foresters who are renewing that wonderful resource of the forest. And it's good to see. Um, there are some in my family that say, oh, your property's not worth anything because they cut trees, it's not pretty to look at. Well, it's not just about look at. The other thing that's particularly important to understand is that when you have trees taken like that, it changes the ecosystem a little bit and creates additional habitat in the forest for the animals that we like to see here. So I am very happy that they have done this in a very good way and I can already see the trees growing, the little trees. Now that patch that wasn't cut, I'm not sure why they didn't, that one that's right kind of in the center almost to the top. I'm not sure what the logic of that was. Maybe it's, it's not mature enough. Um, they'll get it some other time. But what's fascinating to me is that I can clearly see to the top and to the left of that patch where new trees have been planted. And that's wonderful. It really is. Let's go ahead now that I've caught my breath. Let's go ahead and hike on back up the hill. It's kind of interesting. I've, I haven't noticed those trees like that before. And it's probably just because of the direction of the sun and the color of the tree needles turning bright yellow at this time of year. Let's see what else we can see from here. That's a little better view, a little higher up the hill. In any case, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Here's a big ponderosa pine. Well, regrettably, I think we're just about out of energy because it says I'm out of power. Now it, it's it's cold out, and when I started, 
we had plenty of juice. But I may have to stop things right here. There you can see a box. That's full of sand for in the winter to spread on this steep hill so that you can get up the hill. I wonder how far we can make, make it before we lose all power. So why don't I say right now, thank you for visiting. If you find this video interesting, do send me a shout out. I like to hear from people. I do know that hiking up a road isn't that interesting, but I hope other parts of it were. Boy, I hope you can hear me huffing and puffing. I will say that the camera doesn't do justice to the to the hill. All right, here's one more view of that mountain across the way with the trees already planted to the left. Now below the road that you can see, I can't really tell if they planted that yet, but they've clearly planted to the left. So it's interesting. We're almost to the top of the hill. I keep getting this signal on my camera, 10%. So it's time to quit. But I'm happy to say that we're back at camp. And here's my gate. Okay, thank you for coming along on this walk. I hope you have a good day. Be safe and communicate with me if you feel so, so inclined. Again, welcome to the Okanagan Forest Channel. So long, be safe. <laughs>